Now. All right. So, hello. Welcome to our Doom event. Uh, we'll be talking about, you know, why people port Doom to various devices from, like, pregnancy tests to Samsung refrigerators to anything and everything they can. Uh, unfortunately, we did not actually figure out how to do this onto a calculator, which was our original goal. So, but we will be talking about how it will, in theory, should be done. Yeah. Uh, so the check-in code is CACODEMON, which we just discovered was the check-in yeah. code. <laughs> um, so if you haven't already, go to the ACM website and uh, check in. And yeah. yeah. So, all right. So today's, ag uh, today's agenda, we'll be talking about what the most basic form of code is and like how Doom was written. Uh, why do people port Doom and how do you port the code to a calculator? Next. All right, so what's the most basic form of code? Uh, first off, we have uh, machine code. Next slide, Ethan. So machine code is literally what the computer speaks. It's like numbers, so computer grober, and uh, it, it makes numbers. So it's not like user-friendly. You can't really understand numbers that easily. Uh, assembly is slightly less low level than that. It has some English and words, but it's still kind of super low level with basic instructions. It's also the reason my PA wasn't working for about four hours. But anyways, um, yeah, so assembly's like super low level basic instructions. And then next up we have C. So next slide. Uh, C is structured programming and has a lot more features than assembly and it's more user friendly. So this is what uh, Doom was originally written in with some uh, some of the functions and stuff written in assembly as well. So this is kind of why Doom is really easy to port. It's one of the reasons because it's written in a super low level language that can be ported to multiple devices that support those languages. So next. So why do people want to port Doom? Like, why is this so famous? Next. So first is that it is an open source so that you can basically just have the code online. And then second, it is written in C, so a good language, I guess. <laughs> and then the third one is the code has been kept up to date like throughout the year. So it's like always the newest version. And then fourth, because of its elegant like engine design and also like efficient coding. So it doesn't, you have like a little minimum requirements to port Doom. So that's why you can like actually port Doom on the pregnancy test on my background. And then fifth, it was a cultural phenomenon. It's just like really famous. And then it's also the shareware. So you can just legally get um, a version of Doom for, and finally just for fun. Yep. Yeah, so like now that brings us to I see it's fun. So people are going to be putting Doom on all sorts of crazy things. Um, obviously, there's a, I think, I don't know what this picture is, but it's apparently a giant screen in a truck or something. Like, they just put Doom on it. Like, there's, there's, there's so so many different uh, different ways you can implement it. Um, this is a Doom piano on the right. I guess there's a screen and they put Doom on that. Maybe you could play it with a piano. I'm not sure. Um, that was cool. And then or you can even put it on like really simple, I think this is like an old Kodak camera, like one of the first digital cameras. Um, and then here we have <laughs> the Mac touch bar. <laughs> it looks absolutely terrible, but but it's Doom, it's running. Um, uh, on the left, it's like on a pregnancy test. And like, obviously it's not gonna have like colors of graphics. So it's just a bunch of dots <laughs> and pixels, but that's okay, because it's running on it. And on the right, we have an oscilloscope, which is, I don't really know exactly what that is, but, you know, it's another another um, thing that has, Do Doom can just run on easily. And then my favorite is Doom running in Doom. So there's a video of just, you can go through Doom and there's an arcade machine and you can play, you can like press enter and play Doom on that in-game arcade machine. And it, and it runs like fine, because it's like, as was mentioned earlier, Doom, like it's made really well and it's pretty uh, i don't know if it's basic but it's it's pretty it's pretty it's implemented very well so yeah it's doom and doom and doom and doom and i, I just i just yeah <laughs> okay but like 
how how play zoom on anything like well, what are kind of the general steps so generally you'd need you know whatever you're trying to put it on like console a computer like a toaster i don't know whatever the program the executable you know the thing that you need um and this will probably be like a source port or something you can get zoom usually from like a github link or Maybe you need to code it yourself because it's not compatible with the OS that you want to put it on. And generally you need a data file called an IWAD. Like, you know, I would like to play Doom, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, a source port. There's like a whole bunch of different source ports. I think like on the on this Doom wiki that I got this off of, um, this is generally for like like Windows, Macintosh, a bunch of these other niche Atari, Atari Mint, like I don't even know what these are, but there's all these different ports that can run on these. And, you know, generally if you want to put it on like a graphic calculator, you'd have to know what that calculator is running on and what it would need in order to put like ports on this. So you might need to make your own port, um, but generally like you can look online and there's a lot of ways that you can just install it pretty easily. But um, yeah, some of these examples, a Doom, a Doom, PVC, Amiga Doom, ATB Doom, Bad Mood, um, Chocolate Doom, which is apparently vanilla Doom, but like without the bug fixes, it's kind of okay. Um, Doom Attack, Doom Dive, a whole bunch, of, a whole bunch of versions. Um, yeah, so you just need, or you can just, as I said, get a regular version on GitHub somewhere. Check check the OS compatibility or make your import. And this is like a guy playing. Doom with a toaster, although it's not running with the toaster, he's just controlling it with the toaster by like smashing the 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 buttons on the toaster. I guess it works. Whatever works. Okay. All right. And to follow up on Ethan's explanation of um, people's uh, processes on trying to port Doom to different devices, uh, I'm going to just grab a more specific example of people porting Doom. Uh, specifically for TI calculators. Um, so just to give some background information on uh, the languages that TI calculators use, um, usually they use TI Basic, which is similar to Just Basic, which is like a collection of high-level programming languages that made like um, code more accessible for fields outside of math and science. So for uh, students that weren't like working with code all day, um, this high-level code was easier for them to understand and that kind of like opened it up to be used in fields that weren't, it, it just spread the functionality of code to like other people. Um, and so TI Basic, uh, because it's so high level, it's good for math problems, which have a lot more repetitive tasks, but it's not so much for games. Uh, luckily TI calculators can also use assembly, uh, machine code or C, which is the language used for do uh, with the help of C compilers. Uh, here's an example of what TI Basic looks like. Um, these are just the first few lines of a Pong game. Um, if you work with uh, lower level languages, you can probably already see a lot of differences in what you're used to seeing. Um, I'll just give you like a couple of minutes to kind of read through this code. Uh, and comments to the side also kind of just show the functionality of what each section of code is for. Yeah, okay. Um, so hypothetically, if you were to port Doom to a TI calculator, here's some of the hardware you would need. For First of all, you'd need like a computer um, because uh, that's how you're going to kind of like move the software onto the calculator and there's that's kind of where some of the software you need to work with calculators is going to be hosted. Uh, you also need a TI-84 plus. Um, when it comes to porting things to TI calculators, addition is very important. Um, if you try and find different editions of Doom Online and see how people have used them with TI calculators, you'll find that people make a people are very particular about the distinctions about like whether you're using a TI Inspire TI-84 or TI-83, uh, whether it's a plus or not. And then um, 
just like these different calculators, these additions have certain capabilities that are going to affect how you port your uh, game to the calculator. For example, the TI Inspire, noticeably, of course, you're gonna have some graphical differences because of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> the screen is different, but also the TI Inspire is also known for having like a lot more space for memory. And, uh, oh wait, wait, there's one more, there's one more. Uh, there's also the USB-A and the US to USB mini B cable. This is physically what's going to connect your calculator to your computer, as you can see by the ports on the top of the calculator. All right, and then for software, you're going to need a Mirage. You're going to need to download Mirage OS, which is an operating system that's specifically used for TI-83 plus and TI-84 plus. You can see like a screenshot of what kind of uh, the interface for that looks like. You'll see kind of, it's very calculator-like. Um, <laughs> there's also TI Connect, which allows your computer to connect to the calculator uh, software-wise. Um, and then of course, you're also going to need your Doom file. Uh, there's a lot of variations online. Um, this will also change from, depending on what you're trying to port to. Uh, in this case, we're gonna pretend that it's like a zip file. All right, so when it actually comes to executing, uh, porting this Doom file to your TI device, you need to unzip said hypothetical Zoom zip file. Uh, and you're going to send it to your TI device. And this is done by right-clicking your Zoom file and then having the option sent to TI device uh, in the small log that opens up. Um, and then second, you want to launch your calculator after the transfer is complete. It's stressed that you launch it after the transfer has completed or else you run the risk of breaking your calculator. Um, and then once you've launched your calculator safely, you want to open Mirage OS and then navigate to main and then navigate to Doom. And just like that, that's how you launch Doom. <laughs>